Hello and welcome to the final episode of Back Chat for the series and what a panel we have for you as well from the ARC here in Headingley. We have a prince, a pauper and a president. Our prince is Mr Gary Schofield. Kiss him and he turns into a frog. The pauper is Chris Irvin, the poor man's rugby league journalist from the Times newspaper and El Presidente, Mr Lionel Hurst from Thank Gloucestershire you. All Golds. What a panel and what a lot we've got to talk about this yeah. week as well. Fantastic weekend we've just had. Gary Schofield, first of all, million pound game. Let's start with the million pound game. <clears throat> wow, wow, wow. I, I still can't believe it, Dave, honestly. You know, uh, we all know what happened. Hulkies to Rovers listed for 78 minutes in control and then for two minutes it was never going to happen. There's no way made that Salford could keep themselves in Super League. What happened? Yeah. Four tackles down there, score a try. Gareth O'Brien, see you later, good night, God bless. 55 seconds to go, not enough time, not enough 53 time. Se 53 <clears throat> seconds. Well, 53 seconds yeah. then, so. And then, no way made it, it can't happen. But one thing what, what Salford had to do there, Dave, it's quite simple. They had to play like set of six, didn't they? Couldn't mm -hmm. try and score on the first tackle there. But boy, oh boy. Ulkins to Rovers, when you look at it, it's again, they went down that left hand side and made that break, but again, when they got tackled just short, the right hand side, still can't believe it, still can't believe it, not just scoring the tries, and then the Super League golden point, have we ever had a golden point before? I don't think we have. Not in the playoffs. I don't think we have, and yeah. then also as well, when Gareth O'Brien took that ball, everybody, everybody in the ground, and I'm sure the Salford plays, and I'm sure the OKR plays definitely, thought it was good into the 22. Yeah. Wasn't going to go for the job goal, yeah. but I'll tell you what, as soon as it hit that ball, you knew exactly where it was going. It was going straight between the 80s. It was rising as it went. Boy, oh boy. Can't believe it. Still yeah. can't believe it, Dev. Sport in its purest form. Never have two or three matter, minutes mattered more than, than there for Salford. It was uh, incredible. I mean, it must have gone through the, uh, the mind of the whole KR players. 18-10 ahead, into, entering that 78, <coughs> 79th minute. That's it. We're there. We're safe. And that was obviously what the crowd felt as well. But Josh Griffin, yeah. his his part in that mm. was extraordinary. He created he he created really both both tries mm. and uh, Evels and then and then Greg Johnson right at the end. It, extraordinary. And the momentum was with Salford, and you you just felt something was going to happen. You know, f what fifty odd seconds into into uh, extra time, that. Magnificent drop goal. That was a sweetly mm. struck uh, drop goal by Gareth O'Brien from about 45 metres out. Yeah. It was it uh, was a good toss to win in cricket terms. Yeah. It was a good toss to win because yeah. they had the win behind. But also as well though, Dave and Chris, right? Let's just go back to maybe say the last five minutes. Yeah. Right. That 40-20 or 30-70, wasn't it? From from, right. from yeah. And I said, well, that has got to be the play of the season for OKR. That is keeping them in Super League. And so then on the third tackle they blew it, and then Salford bring it away. Then Robert Louis messes it up on the third tackle, and you're thinking, that's it. That's it, this cannot be any more apart from Ulkia winding the clock down. Good night, God bless. Ulkia is still in Super League and Salford have gone. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, how wrong can we be? Lionel Hurst, I mean, how much do you feel for Hawkins to Rovers? And what about the whole system that has given us this game? Is this the way we should be doing it? Well, let me just echo first, Dave, what the boys have said. It, it, it was truly one of world sport's great moments. Mm. If any other sport on this planet or beyond could have produced what we witnessed at Hull Kingston on Saturday, I'd like to see it. Yeah. It was just theatre and drama. It was a head-shaking, magnificent moment. And let me say this for all those, I'll always seize the moment en passant to bang the drum for the South. Uh, people may want to know where the great centre play from Josh Griffin. Where's Griffin from? Is he from Wigan, Featherstone, Hull? No, of course, he's from the Prime Minister's constituency of Whitney. Uh, great, uh, his brother, as you know, the elder boy, Darrell, came through the Oxford Cavaliers with us. So it just shows you, great men up north play the game, but yeah. great men all over uh, Britain play the game. But to ask you, pose, you pose the question, what do you want? Look at the headlines. Wasn't it the most popular trending item on Twitter? What do people want? Of course you feel for whole KR, but the promotion and relegation in all sports, we know that. There's triumph and tragedy. For me, what a wonderful, wonderful match. And that's the game penciled in for next year. That's the game we want to see. Yeah, yeah. And that's listen, the only criticism, I like the branding, the way they'd put the post protectors up, the signage, one million pound game. Let's not undervalue it. It's, let's get the millions up. A million's nothing these days. It's worth a lot more Although than Though it that. wasn't actually the million pound game, it was the minus one million pound game. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. But well, do you have any sympathy for, for, for such as Jamie Peacock, for example, who came out and said, um, there are people in there crying, you know, wives, kids, there are people now who've lost their jobs. Would you Is simple, simple, simple? No. Everybody knew, everybody, <laughs> everybody knows the criteria before the season starts. It's quite simple here now. It's quite simple with Wilkinson Rovers. 
sacked the coach after three games. Yes. And then they got beat by Oldham in the Challenge Cup. Mr Hudgel is smoking out the bad apples at Hulkinson Rovers. Ah. The Albert Kelly situation. Peacock makes his comeback thinking he could be the saviour. They're begging, Dave, they're begging sorry, Terry Campese to come back because he hasn't played for six months. They're trying to get shit of him. Now they knew there was in the mire and, and they asked Campese to make himself available. Hulkinson Rovers have got themselves in this problem here, the situation. They knew exactly at the start of the season. Have it been good enough for 23 games to get in the yeah. top eight? Then they've had a few games there to get away from the million pound game. And quite simply, quite simply again, let's put some onus on the players here. They haven't been good enough week in and week out on a consistent basis. That's why they deserve to go up the championship, and that's why Salford deserve to yeah. stay. The other thing as well is there's the yin and yang of this. I mean, we've got Lee yes. Centurions coming up, yeah. and that, that's yeah. the point. And we wanted it, we wanted PR, and, 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 and we've got it. It is, it is, but, but Lionel's right. It yes. is about triumph and tragedy and all that. It's encapsulated in this one game. And it is awful in its way, but it, and it is almost like watching a, a car crash. And that's why, yeah. that's why I believe, in terms of uh, viewing figures, it was the second most highest watched was game it? because, yeah. because people want to see but, it. But also as well, Chris and Dave, right, let's go back 12 months, right? If Wakefield had gone down last year, nobody would have given a care with it because they wanted them out of the ground and same as this year if it had been Salford who had gone down they wouldn't have cared less because they don't want cool cash in the game I have no sympathy whatsoever with Hulkies to Rovers they knew from the start what was happening there yeah. and they've got relegated and don't forget may I say this Dave you know Salford whether it was genuine or right or not I've not seen the evidence they were deducted six points and they felt greatly wronged um, so look at the fantastic triumph, as I say, for, for Salford. The joy at the end, Marwan on the field. Mm. You want more Marwans. It's about showtime. It's <laughs> theatre. We've had enough of these monolithic, boring people in the game. This is a wonderful sport. Listen, we've had great playwrights and poets and everything in Britain. Shakespeare, Milton. Could anybody write a play? Of this quality that unfolded at Hulkingston Road. Well, probably, it's not possible. It'd have been kicked out by the editor, wouldn't it? Because he said, "Oh, that's that's not, that's not it, realistic." You know, well, we were saying that. Look, it's just not realistic. Yeah. But, wow! But fabulous. there are but there are losses at the same time. We're we're mm. going to lose the whole uh, next year. We lose the whole, yeah, whole yeah, derby. Yeah. 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 Look, talking. But we to, get the Salford lead up. We do. But we're, talking to people at FC. Get Lee Wigan. Uh, yeah. FC. Uh, they were absolutely. They they so wanted Rovers to stay up. And and um, um, Chris, that, it's tough. I mean, but Chris, it's tough. It's tough. Sport. It's, it's sport. Exactly. It's, it's, it's sport. It's but, tough. But Chris, it hang is. on, boys. I mean, don't forget, whole Kingston Rovers. I don't know whether the chairman, the owner, said this yet. They can remain full time. They, they are. They are. So yeah. therefore, nobody needs to lose their jobs. Yeah. Um, and the challenge is for them to try and get back, which well, will not and, be easy. And the point is mm. that, that, that with the system. The door is open, yes. so it's up to them next season mm. yeah. to do Absolutely. that. Absolutely, uh, it is up to them. And it's yeah. not, it's not, it's not. You know, I, I mean, if Gareth Walker was here with us, he'd be telling us it, it's not oblivion they're falling into. They're falling into a championship mm. yeah. which they will enjoy. I mean, they're not enjoying. Yes. Well, I, I, yes. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't say they'll enjoy it. Well, the fan, be, I think the fans yeah, will enjoy it. One thing for sure, as Lionel just said, it, it's going to be a huge challenge because they're the big fish. They're yeah. the big fish now in, in that championship, and everybody will want a piece of that yeah, fish. Will, you yes. know, so it, it won't be easy. The big thing again. Depends what players they keep. Have they got the mentality? You know, I'm not into psychology one little bit, but have they got the mentality at times when they're yeah. going to go to Dewsbury, they're going to go to Batley, they're going to go to Featherstone, you know, and they're going to be uh, playing against players who want to rip into them, Dave, who yeah. want to rip into them because they are the big fish yeah. and everybody will want a piece yeah. of them. And I think it's a quote from Jamie Peacock this week is we can now not just look at lopping off a few branches, the whole root That's and branch. Right. Yeah. Change of the club has There's to There's something with. wrong at that club, and yeah. they'll, they'll sort it out, the boys. But I tell you what, Dave, you know, you mentioned the championship. That's turning into rugby league's shining jewel. Yeah. Um, I'm telling you, don't forget Toulouse are coming through. God willing, Toronto will. There's going to be a logjam of real excellence in that division in the next few years. There was another <coughs> darker side to, to Saturday, and that was the, uh, the violence that followed the, uh, the uh, yes. final whistle, which is, um, was yeah. alarming. Sadly, probably probably not surprising, but you know, talk to, I mean, one of our colleagues, uh, a, a, a cameraman, had his his equipment trashed, and uh, right. there were very upset, some very very upsetting scenes. Talked to a, a lot of people about this, and uh, obviously the police involved. But that wasn't a good side of what we like to think of as a family sport. And unfortunately, we're seeing, I think we're seeing these in incidences increasing, and, and that I think so. Where's the yeah. evidence for that? Uh, well, we, we saw the situation at Huddersfield with, uh, you know, with, 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 uh, with Salford. Salford. Uh, there was a situation oh, yes. witness, uh, Warrington, uh, Warrington, uh, Warrington witness this season. There's been one or two more. And I, I, I think that we have got to very carefully guard this sport mm. against, uh, you know, uh, Nigel Wood said mm. banning orders will be issued. Well, 
uh, were banning orders mm. done at Salford following I that? I think they're still investigating. Okay, they're still investigating. It's yeah. a long investigation, isn't yeah. it? Really, you know. I think that's so they can drop drop dock six points off Salford for the start well, of next well, season. Well, that's right. But, <laughs> I tell you what, it would surprise me if they said, "Well, all right, we might look at two points here, so we keep looking." But that was <laughs> <laughs> it. What a clever situation! Yeah, well, though. Right, Chris, I, I fully understand where you're coming. It can't be swept under the carpet, but and I say the the, the be all and end all was. Wow, what, oh, amazing, what, amazing what, what an absolute finish. And I'll tell you what, yeah. if every rugby league could have a finish like that, then yeah. I'll tell you what, people won't get into the crowd. But, into but the you, ground but Gary's right, but may I say this, David? I mean, that just topped off and uh, really contributed. I mean, we saw a quartet of magnificent encounters across the world. I mean, let's be honest, the two Super League semi finals yeah. on the Thursday and Friday, and then the Australian final, mm. and then this. I mean, you know, you're marking rugby league out of 100 or whatever, yeah. but we're, we're, our mathematics and, is and all and over. We're, we're, you're you going beyond 100, yeah. aren't you? Boys as well. <coughs> Do you know what was fascinating again with about Salford? Because I was speaking to Mark Gleeson and uh, Gareth Carvel after the game. They had bodies out there that were just totally busted. They that, should, yeah, they should yeah. have been on the field. Right. They should not have been yeah. on the field. There were some players on the bench who wanted, but they couldn't. Yeah. And the, the, the busted bodies. It, it's just a remarkable well, performance. Robert, Robert Louis did. looked completely gone. Murdoch Masilla looked completely gone. Yeah. They had no. no Colchak no, no, couldn't a, come back oh, on. That's right. You know, yeah. and and Flanagan was carrying the injury. Flanagan was gone, and the other young kid, I can't pronounce his surname. Begins with K. Chris Nicky. Chris Nicky, that's right. <laughs> well done, David. <laughs> it is if you're from oh, Belial. <laughs> it is if you're from Belial, Woody, I'll tell you that. But <laughs> you know, they, they have players who were totally yeah. busted. So, again, yeah. the commitment from them Salford players for that last two minutes was yeah. sensational. And, and, and even now, all right, Webster, you know, he didn't do a great job at Wakefield in, in, in his class with Fairley again. If he could have just bottled that two minutes yeah. of what the yeah. Salford players has into his own players, Anyway, the rest is history. Yeah. Hulkist and Rovers are relegated, Salford and... And it yeah, seems that Marwan is going to stay. Is it, well, I mean, well, is that that's, 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 it's, that's today's news. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's today's news. <laughs> um, just, just on that, Lionel, Lionel touched on this as well. We had a fantastic semi-final, uh, two fantastic semi-finals yes. on the Thursday and Friday. That great million pound. We've sat here and grizzled and groaned and moaned about this eights and whether it's working and whether it's not. Do we actually sit back and say... You know, it's it, it's not a bad system after Look, all. When it comes down to the nitty gritty, this is where we are at the business end of the season. Yes. The sport shows itself in the best possible light, and I think we, we, we've always known this. We, get, we come to the apex of the season, and it, 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 it's, it's do or die time, yes. and that's when rugby league, you know, and sport tends to deliver. And mm. and, and absolutely, but all all four uh, games that Ni Lionel mentioned, yeah. they all delivered in their in their own way. Is it a vindication of the system? Not necessarily, because you probably get that in any system, uh, uh, because the sport will all sh shine mm. through. I, I but, the system, think, but it will get to better, think, Christopher. It will, but I happen to think, still, this is the groaning, grizzling part, we're playing too many games. Oh, yeah. We're playing too many games. Now, I would like to see, you know, um, 22, uh, tw 23 games, include the Magic Weekend, I'd like to see top five playoffs, uh, 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 and, uh, and instead of a million pound, get maybe two million pound games, play yes. off between the Championship top side and the bottom side in Super League. Hey, you know and of course, well, everybody will say, well, revenue will be dropping as a result of that. But look, we've got spectator fatigue in terms of two million games, we've got player fatigue. It's up to the clubs. Fatigue? Well, how? Are you watching the game, Chris? <laughs> well, obviously, well, some of the games might have a little bit boring oh. where you might fall asleep. But if you look to the semi final <laughs> attendance at Wigan, yeah, Gary, yeah, you would have to conclude yeah. that. I agree, Chris. But also, well, as well, the week you said, before against Catalan, they're yeah. going to record crowds. But anyway. also, as well, Chris, you're talking about two million pound games. <laughs> Hulkies and Rovers had two million pound game. They blew it against Huddersfield the week before, yeah. and they blew it against. Well, drop goals have been their curse. Yeah. May I say this, boys? You know, I take the point that you, you'll perhaps touch on a bit further. The congested fixture list. The biggest worry about the fixture list for me is it's freezing out international rugby league. Yeah. That is the biggest problem with that. And we may come on that, Dave. You're in charge. We will. We will. That. But no, you're all in charge. But may, may I say this too? Let us not forget the wonderful events in the south of France. Look at Rochdale Hornets victory. Yeah. Toulouse has swept all before them, yeah. and yet Rochdale Hornets it's when they God bless them and turn them over there in an epic encounter so it's not just at Super League it's right mm. through the professional divisions we're seeing some sensational rugby league and these playoffs may need refining but they're very good just just touch on that just <coughs> before we go to our first break to lose I mean you, you've seen them first we've been twice of times yet yeah, this this year how good are they going to be in the championship next year well, look, I mean, uh, uh, whether um, don't forget they've done extreme, they, they knocked Lee out of the chal uh, Challenge Cup, yep. did they not, and gave Wakefield Trinity a fright at their place. Mm -hmm. So there's some real quality there. A lot of them are full time, and they will have to strengthen and recruit because, as Gary said, there's some very mighty sides in this championship. Yeah. I think that Toulouse will be looking to consolidate and stay in that and then build on it. But uh, some good French boys, good foundations, a famous old club. Mm. 
Plenty of money, a great coach, Sylvain Roulez. Mm. Good to see the French. Right, well, you're not saying with the talent what the French have got, they're not going to beat us in this test match in a couple of weeks' time, are they? Well, you know, <laughs> Gary, let me just say this. All. I'm telling you now, if the French, they've got injuries, France can turn out its best starting 13 in over 50 years. They're all full-time, yeah. and there's some real talent emerging in France. I'll tell you what then, Dave Woods, Wayne Bennett better get over here as soon as possible. <laughs> the French are coming, the French are coming. New coach as well, new coach for France, new coach for England, yeah. new coach for Australia, yeah. new coach for New Zealand. Yeah. It's all new, it's only Steve McCormack who's, who's been around the block. Indeed, excellent, though, excellent. Yeah. No, it's all very exciting. It is very exciting. Uh, and we're only just touching on it because we're going to be talking about the, uh, the semi-finals, about the four nations ahead uh, and all kinds of other things in the next part of the programme. But here's a number for you. In fact, here's four numbers for you. 52, the number of tackles that Danny Houghton made in the, in the Challenge Cup final, including the match winner. 53 seconds left when Salford launched that last attack to win the game. 54 and 55 the last two years that Warrington ah. won the Rugby League title. Wow. Is there an omen there? Wow. Bingo. <laughs> yeah, well 56, done. That's good. Chris Irvin's wayside. <laughs> right, we'll be back <laughs> for, uh, for section two. Sorry, good. We'll be back for section two in just a few moments' time. <laughs> So welcome back to part two of Back Chat from the Ark in Headingley, our final uh, episode of the season. And we're looking ahead to the final match of the season, domestically anyway, the grand final. The big one, Warrington against Wigan, two great semi-finals. Did you enjoy the semi-finals? Uh, yeah, they were two great. I mean, lots of controversy, lots mm. of... Uh, video ref. Superb, uh, superb <laughs> rugby as well, yeah. Video ref, the <coughs> longest video ref thing I, I can remember. Five and a half minutes to decide. Have you ever seen that two tries decided by one video referee? Not decision? personally. <laughs> I think that was... that was. Um, it was extraordinary, though, but five and a half minutes. I mean, that, yeah. is, that is some going... Uh, mm. You know, Ben Thaler set some was. form of record there. But uh, overlooking that, I, I thought that whole... I mean, they were awful in the first half, but they gave it a real crack second half, yeah. and it took a great... Great comeback by Wigan, and, 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 and Warrington. You know they they, they played uh, they played very well in their their semi final to beat St Helens. Um, and I think we've got the. T I think this is the right final. I, I, yeah, but yeah. it's two contrasting sides. You know, a, a, a w Warrington can play expansively. They really can throw it about. Wigan are not there. They will want to get them into a into an arm wrestle. And uh, it's a tremendous it's a tremendous Ooh. prospect. And. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Warrington have not won a league championship for 61 years. And this, yeah, th fans. this is th it's the year. I mean, you know, Cronulla hadn't won in half a century, and Wigan yeah. uh, Hull had not won at Wembley ever. Yeah. And so maybe it's the, maybe there is an omen there. But yeah. I think I think Wigan would argue differently. And what I like about Wigan is they've they've they've, they've had so much thrown at them. You know, losing so many key players, both Tompkins, Manfredi. Yeah. McAlore them early in the season, yeah. and their kids have stood up. Oh, Lachlan, yeah, who might, who might, play. might, play, might play. or might not, but they've they've withstood all this, and uh, there they are in the final with some with some great kids, Lewis Tierney and Sam Powell has been tremendous for them at hooker, and many others, and. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating final. It's, it's a worthy final, I think. For uh, that's, that's two minutes without repetition, deviation. Because it's enthusiasm for the, yeah, for the final. Lionel. Well, look, as a Warrington boy, that's where I was introduced to the game as a, a child, uh, to see the mighty wire, the men in primrose and blue, finally lifting this trophy, which I'm sure they will. And, uh, you didn't look, see them win it 61 years ago, did you, Lionel? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I was around about. My father would have been there, but my mum and dad were there at the great Wembley re uh, replay at Odsall in 54, 54 but we yeah. mustn't digress. But I think Warrington... But what I love about this, you've used that phrase, kids. You know... Warrington and Wigan, certainly Wigan, if I may say, they must be, this must be the greatest rugby town on the planet. Yeah. Wigan have been at the forefront of this sport since Queen Victoria's time. And of the 17 boys on duty the other day, Wigan must have had, what, 
11, 12 are either Wiganers or have come through their system or both. But what's most pleasing, Warrington have always struggled in that regard. I reckon Warrington must have had yeah. seven, eight or nine boys similarly produced. There's quite a few, there's quite a clutch on both sides. who have actually yeah. played each other in grand finals yes. at academy level, Indeed. Warrington and Wigan. And so that's the way, shows. David, yeah. these are two well-run, well-structured clubs who are reducing their own talent. This is what we want to see. Who's going to win? Well, now, who knows? We oh. want the game to win, but of course I'd love the Wyatt. I'll win. tell you who knows. Gary Schofield. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I know we get things right, Dave, don't I, to be you, honest with you? But, yeah, you uh, have witness finishing but yeah, but it's, it's yeah, Tony fact. Smith being the next coach of St. Helens. Uh, oh. We have Paul Rowley as the next coach of England. Move on, move on, <laughs> move on, move on. Yeah, but I say exactly what uh, Chris has said. There. Two contrasting styles. In. We know what we're going to get with Wigan, don't we? We know what we're going to get for yeah. the full 80 minutes. Okay, let's change a little bit. When they played Warrington a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I've had a bit of criticism, uh, by the way, Dave, from this by saying about Wigan. Have you? Yes, yeah, by Wigan. You know, I said, well, it's Plan A, Plan A, Plan A. Then they went to Plan B, and we oh, saw what did, happened yeah. spectacularly when they played Warrington a couple of weeks ago. But we know what we're going to get for Wigan, don't we? You but did say, Gary, that you, that you felt that Wigan put would send a glass eye to sleep. Is that well, that? Hey, I tell you what, Chris, <laughs> I'm, hey, listen, I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. Even the supporters at times. The great Bill Asher six weeks ago, Wigan are so boring. And he even said, did Bill Asher, that uh, Sean's a boring coach, he should be sacked. But that's quite simple. That's not going to happen. The successful is, well, he hasn't brought trophies. He, well, he's won the double, but they've yeah. not won the grand final. How, how can, not, how can you hammer a coach who this year has lost? I'm not hammering the coach. McAlorum has David, lost. David, I'm, Tompkins, not, I'm, not hammering the, I'm not hammering the coach. It's just everybody just says the situation, the same thing that Wigan play the same way. Well, they do, but they do play for 80 minutes. They know how to win. It's the Wigan philosophy. And as you talk about the young kids who are coming mm. in, same as what Warrington's doing now. It's happened at Leeds. It's happened at St. Helens. That's right. Everybody knows exactly the way that they should be playing. And yeah. that's the philosophy of what Wigan do. They will play for the full 80 minutes. For Warrington on Saturday, the important factor for them is quite simple. What has got on there this season is quite simple. Playing open, attractive for Billy. That's why they finished the top. That's why there was only 90, what, 90 seconds, 80 seconds away from the grand final yes. and also to uh, winning the Challenge Cup. And now they're at the grand final. What Warrington have to do, it's simple. They have to play the same way they have done all season. If they get into this arm wrestle with Wigan, Wigan will turn them over. And what's the weather forecast? Of course, if it's a dry track, Warrington can play this swashbuckling style. If it's wet and raining and so on, well, it'll be more difficult. Well, I think if it is, if it is wet and raining, Matty Smith will, will lick his lips because yes. that's, that's just his yeah. kind of territory. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be interesting at halfback, you know, um, if Deck Patton gets the nod. Deck Patton play. has to play. Right. You know, he takes the pressure off, off Gidley. OK, Sando is, is an individual player, Maverick, but, uh, but for mine, if he is fit, which I don't believe that he is, but Declan Patton, what he does, he takes the pressure off Gidley, releases Gidley to play with a bit more of his, a bit mm. more of his, he plots around there, takes the pressure off there. His kicking game's good, his organisation's good, and I'll tell you what as well, people will be saying it might be bonkers here, but Declan Patton for mine should be the England number seven in this Four Nations and put Luke Gale at number six. Declan Patton is ready for the International Rugby League. Whoa. Interesting. That's a big call. Whoa. That's a big call. Where do you see uh, George Williams? How's he shaping up? George, yeah, he, he's doing okay, but yeah. again, at times... Different though, type of player. Again, with, with George, at times, he's a little bit indecisive doesn't it? You know, he puts himself in two or three minds which he gets lost a little bit. But oh yeah, he's a quality number six. Yes. He's a quality number six. But I just feel as though with a number seven point of view, he could take the pressure oh. off there. Williams wouldn't let us down at stand up, but you've got to give Luke Gale a chance. You know, he yeah. like with the way that he plays with Cass, he plays away from the rook area, yeah. he plays the second man out there and give the service to the outside backs. Luke Patton and Luke Gale. Declan Patton, sorry, and Luke Gale as half back. So no Widdup then? Uh, no Hawkinson. Widdup's no. had no form at all in the year. No, he's been Trent Hawkinson. Let's move on, Dave. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Man of Steel, Danny Houghton. Uh, apparently twice as many votes as anyone else. Is that, yeah. right? is that just down to tackle 52? or I don't think so. No, because that's his peers. That's the yeah. votes of his peers. And yeah. when you look at the voting pattern, he, he, he polled twice as many first yeah. votes, which are the crucial votes, than Gareth Ellis, who, yeah. came, who came second. I, 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 there's been He's a the one Jeremy Corbyn of Rugby League. Who? D Danny Houghton? Yeah, in, in getting more votes than anyone else. Well, <laughs> I, think he's, I think Danny Houghton is a bit more... Popular in that respect, but anyway, that's that's move on from that. He will be, he will be on the side, anyway. I, I, Should have been Denny, Denny Solomon because he's a left winger. Anyway, too many politics. Carry on. Yeah, on. I, I think he's been tremendous for them. You know, he's, he's he, he won the Hint Mountain Award, twelve hundred tackles. Mm. But yeah, people do remember that fantastic tackle on Ben Curry. I think that that probably 
crystallise people's yes. maybe some people's yes. votes. But I think he's a deserved winner, you know, and he's been he's been at the top of his game for Hull yeah. for, for many seasons yeah. now. I, I would love to see him get a crack in that England England squad. Well, I that's really the would. point, Dave, isn't it? Yeah. We are yeah. so blessed at the number nine position. I mean, will he make the uh, England team? Well, well we've had this discussion before. before. It's going to be Hodgson first choice, isn't it? You would have yeah, thought. Yeah, Clark. The way Clark. 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 They've got yeah. a, as, as an impact. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately for Houghton, as Chris has just mentioned there, and Lyme himself, that you know we've got quality hookers. So, yes. but he, he wouldn't look out of a place no. having the ship. That, that is mm -hmm. no doubt about that. But with Danny Houghton, he's missed consistency. You expect the 45, 48, 50 odd tackles a game, don't you? got good service from dummy half at times he's got a decent kicky game and, he, and, he, and he's scooting there when when they're on the front foot he wouldn't look out of place in England shirt but unfortunately Josh Hodgson and Daniel Clark will just get it before him yeah yeah uh, I was talking to Lee Radford about him um, last week and he said that he's not even missed a single training session this year Donation. and he said they have a, a, a physio who when a player shows a sign of injury likes to kind of make sure they're okay pulls them out of training so under those circumstances for him not to have missed a single training session a bit like myself actually when I played <laughs> you never missed through injury, did you? Another couple of hangovers on the way, but never through injury. Um, but yeah. terrific, terrific, terrific Man of Steel winner. Yeah, absolutely. Oh no, listen, and this is the sort of player we're so proud of in our game. And when they're interviewed, they're such quality boys, quality men. It, this game has got so, so much to be proud of on and off the field. It really has. And the oh. first, the first Hull player to win Man of Steel yeah, yeah. as well. Is that yeah. so? It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But, but also, as well, all the three of them, they were, you know, really good candidates. If the, yeah. if Solomon would have been picked in and say to no, me he, argue, he, he got yeah. my vote because you know he's broke Sidney Nellis's record yeah. cast record he's broke the Super League record yeah. and says we all know what a warrior Gareth Ellis has been so whoever would have yeah. won it you know Danny Outman was very very much congratulations you know I don't think there would have been a disagreement between any of them would there? it was good as well that the RFL supplied uh, supplied us with the kind of voting figures and to just to see how how overwhelmingly it, how won the award was was interesting, and that's, interesting. and that's significant yeah. as well. Yeah. But uh, I think he's a, a player who's widely admired in the game uh, for many years, yeah. and he's had his best season. Uh, and Hull dominated that night because Ranford won the won the uh, oh. Coach of the Year award. In fact, well, Wigan and Warrington were a bit conspicuous by their absence at Old Trafford on right. Monday night in yeah. terms of, in terms yeah. of the awards. But they they're the ones. But it's, it's significant how how good a season Hull had. But the wheels did come off after after the Challenge Cup final. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, they said. did. Uh, yeah. And was it expected? Well, when yeah. you when you look at the, the the four games, what they have played, you know, <coughs> St. Helens, you know, yeah. the, the lads themselves didn't come out of the pub well choosing, which was fair enough. Good <laughs> effort, good effort against St. Helens. Great effort against Wigan for forty minutes. They were okay. Wakefield rubbish. Warrington, Warrington, the occasion got to him, so the pressure from there. And then against Wigan, for 40 minutes, it just didn't turn up. When they decided to have a go, too much to do for themselves, and Wigan just overpowered him. But yeah. for Hull, to be honest with you, it's been a great season. That's you look right. at the season before last, you know, pretty poor. They wanted Radford out. Last year, they just struggled to get into the top eight, yes. wanted Radford out. But now, they've got this where motto Tony, with the recruitment's right, the players want to put the black and white shirt on. Radders have got the best out of his players. Yeah. It's been a great season for Hull, but my only issue now with Hull boys is simple as this. They need to sort their halfbacks out. Yeah, that's if right. they don't move, if they want to move to that next level, yeah. if they want to keep winning Challenge Cups, getting to grand finals or games to grand finals, and, and, and contending the top players, they need creat creativity at halfback. Because Carlos quite simply, at this moment, but in what time, about Jordan Abdul? They haven't got, got it. Is Jordan Abdul? Jordan Abdul's okay, but uh, for a halfback as well, for one of them. Or certainly maybe two of them, as you're looking at standoff, or maybe a scrum half, you need one of them maybe to be a support player, a bit of pace. So what you've got to decide with Jordan is it's simple. Is he going to be the main man with the organising, or is he going to be the one who maybe with a tactical kicking? But one thing for sure here, if Hull don't do that, they will not be challenging for trophies if yeah. they don't sort the halfbacks out. OK, quick round, Robin. Who's going to win the grand final? Gary, first of all? Warrington by seven. Uh, Warrington by seven? As specific as that? Like, you don't have to be that specific? No, <laughs> no. Well, look, uh, I, I, certainly Warrington for sure. Yeah. Yes. And I'm going to go Wigan by four. Oh, Wigan really? by four? Yeah. More specificity. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? <laughs> right, International Rugby League looms. Ah. Uh, looking forward to the grand final. International Rugby League <clears throat> rooms. Four Nations comes up just a couple of weeks. Well, the, the France game a couple of weeks after the grand final. Um, Sean O'Loughlin likely not to be involved right. because of his injuries. Whether he plays in the grand final remains to be seen, but he's the England captain. If he's yes. not playing, who's the England captain? Well, well it was a big call by uh, Wayne Bennett when he got the announcement as a new coach. So he announced Loughlin straight away as captain. You know, as we all know with yes. Sean, with his injuries, and at times he hasn't made himself for England when, the, when they've been going away. So that was a bit of a surprise, but uh, for man, there's only one captain. It's James Graham. Simple yes. as that. Okay. Yes, I think it must be James, but may I say this, David, on the wider thing, you know, we're all talking about how wonderful this game is, and you know, we often, um, when we're discussing it uh, in Cheltenham and other places, my rugby league friends, we say, look, if this game is so great, the rules 
great. The players, magnificent. If you're on Dragon's Den, presenting the case of rugby league, saying to the Dragons, look, for 20%, let us have a few million, you'd show them the action of this sport. They would be, you'd show them the whole KR finale. Um, what is played worldwide? And they'd say, look, if it's such a wonderful product line, with all of you, as you say it is, why is it not played all over the world? Why is it not the success story it deserves to be? And the simple truth is, boys, I'm sorry, until this game gets a powerful, strong, independent, international board that puts nation v nation above everything else and rolls out a world plan so England, France, Serbia, doesn't matter who you are, know where you're playing for the next eight, ten years, I'm sorry, we're always going to be disappointed that this great sport is not played throughout the world. I feel like You've standing up and cheering. Hey. No, well, but, thank uh, you. But, but unless Deborah Meaden's going to buy into rugby league, <laughs> we, might have a, we might have a problem with that. Yes. Uh, you're spot on, Lionel. But it, it presupposes that, that rugby league is, has got a sensible plan. Uh, and also, the fact is that Australia dominate the game. Yes. And they do not have an interest, really, in international rugby league. They're just interested in themselves. So, in Chris, can I just say, are we now reaching what, for me, is the most pivotal, seminal point for our great sport? If the World Cup is outstanding, of course, if England, anybody in Australia wins, it would be magnificent. Let us imagine huge crowds, lots of money made, a marvellous success, and then we're told, are we not, that we're rolling out an eight-year plan or something mm. of that nature, taking us to 2025. So for me, the dawning of, 2000, uh, of um, 2018, that is the year. If Rugby League has not announced properly a global plan on the back of a great World Cup, it's going to be tough. Well, prepare to be disappointed because yeah. 2013 was, was, was by, by and large, mm. a very good World Cup. It was well organised yes. and the crowds were, were, were reasonable and there was a, a real feeling that the game was, was, was galvanised and, and ready for the future and then it completely evaporated. And that's, yeah. always the, that's always the danger. There was no backup plan to take it forward, certainly no legacy. Um, no. I mean, you, you know, yeah. towards your neck of the woods, a game was taken to Bristol, Bristol very successfully success. and then, and then forgotten about. Yeah. And that's, that's the problem with, with, with the sport. Uh, and the, the problem, boy, is this as much as the great work we're doing in Gloucestershire with the all gold so many young hundreds and hundreds of youngsters boys and girls playing the game you want to see our youth team the players we're signing from Bristol Bath Gloucester Cheltenham we're packing the professional mm. side with young boys tremendous talent uh, uh, but we Coventry too, Oxford they're all doing wonderful things but I'm sorry as good as not as we're all trying to be until you get it right internationally it's preventing all of us flourishing because yeah. the game has no profile yeah. Derry Schofield, well, expansionist. What a great international <laughs> hey, listen, player. Hey, 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 listen, at the end of the day, international league, that's what it's all about. Of course. And, that, and that's how your sport is judged. You know, it is there. So, as, as we all know, yeah, we want to win the Four Nations. I don't think we've ever won it, Chris, have we? We haven't won the, no. Not the Four Nations. We haven't won the Four Nations. We've got the World Cup coming next year. Yeah, that, that's where you, 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 you bear us on, you know, yeah. and all the others. Let's not forget about the Kiwis here, you know. They, oh, they're outstanding. You know, they, they won the, the World Cup in 2008, got beat by Oxford there. So, let's not forget about the Kiwis no, yeah, but until we Until we get ourselves back at the top of the international calendar, then, uh, yeah, we are going to struggle. Mm, ten years since we beat. It's, it's ten, well, Australia. we were there. We were there that yeah. night in 2006 uh, in Sydney, where, where 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 we won, and you know Gareth Rayner's try, and you know and the, the big punch up in, yeah. in that game with Stuart Field and and Willie Mason. But it's ten years ago yeah. when I first started covering rugby league. <clears throat> Yeah, and Gary was playing. We'd, we'd win on a reasonable basis. No, we don't win. We've not been there for ten years. Let's not forget as well. Let's not forget as well. When we played the World Cup in 1992, we only just got beat 10-6. 10-6, yeah. You know, we only just got so yeah, we was getting forward, getting forward. But since, well, unfortunately, you know, the Super League era and you know, whatever, yeah. whether their players have got better, others got. No. Worse, he's always open to debate, but, Gary, but still, yeah. but you know, we're nowhere near it now to get no, where we want to get. Oh, we're not playing. Do you realise it? When the boys take the field. Um, all right, in France or whatever, it's going to be almost 12 months to the yeah. day since our national team performed at rugby league. What other self-respecting would this happen in any other sport in the world? Absolutely, it's laughable. We Absolutely. must fix it up. Well, when did Absolutely. Australia last play in this country? <laughs> well, we'll think about that during this break, and that might be your break question. When did Australia last play? Yeah, very, in this country? very good question. <laughs> yes, Do you indeed. Know the answer we'll have the answer for you <laughs> in just a few moments' time. <laughs>
So welcome to the final part of Back Chat for 2016 with our guest today, Gary Schofield, Lionel Hurst from the Gloucestershire All Golds and Chris Irving from the Times newspaper. Uh, we set you a question beforehand. When was the last time Australia played in this country? Four years ago, I think. Had a glass of wine, a piece and a cigar and we discussed it and we think it's four <laughs> years since Australia last played in this country. Um, right, Lionel Hurst, lots to talk to you about in terms of League One, etc. But before that, the, the NRL Grand Final. Oh, yes. uh, wow, Cronulla, what a story. What a fantastic story. Well, you know, Dave, what a story. And um, what a finale, too. I've watched the whole of the NRL. I mean, let's be honest, without Premier, we may as well forget life. It's just oh, What fantastic. an answer. You'll be invited But it is. Here. I mean, the, the <laughs> coverage of the NRL is nothing short of majestic and magnificent. It's totally marvellous. We love it. I watch every game where I can. If I can't, I record them and then look at them later. So we wanted a final that reflected all the things that have gone on. And a final that captured the total flavour of their playoff system. The average gate was 36,000 all their mm. playoff games. Sellouts in Melbourne, 45,000 at Brisbane. Look at the, 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 the um, Viking clap and the huge crowds at Canberra. So we demanded a final uh, to reflect all this wonderful stuff and we got one. What yeah. a game. Yeah. What a crowd. 84,000 people. 84,000 people. And of course the lovely story. You know, we're, I'm an expansionist. People know that. So Melbourne are vital. But even I had to put that aside and go with the heart and see wonderful Cronulla who were dead and buried as a club in great ignominy yeah, yeah. two years ago yeah. to win this title and what a game. The, we mentioned the closing seconds boys of the whole Kingston Salford clash but the closing seconds of this game, the onslaught uh, by Melbourne on the Cronulla line and how Cronulla repelled these attacks, mm. body after body thrown in the way of attack, outstanding. Do you pay for Premier Sport every month? Because I suspect you won't be after that little bit. <laughs> um, they'll, be, they'll be on the phone to you. This for free. Thank you for that, Lionel. Um, Gary Schofield, great story. Great story. The Absolutely. And, uh, and I say as well, we lost our great uh, himself uh, this year, Roger Millward, who yes. was uh, you know, an ex criminal player. So, mm. yeah, he'll be, he'll, be, he'll be smiling down there with Roger. Congratulations to Cronulla and also to the coach himself, Shane Flanagan. I played with Shane at uh, Western Suburbs in 89. So, done a great job. As we saw, we know all, all the adversity, what they went through two years ago with all the bit of a scandal, what went through there. Tremendous performance, well, great performance on both sides, quality yes, well. quality on both sides. As we all know, the Aussies, they'll go for the full 80 minutes. And as Lionel said, it could have been one if the, the centre had seen Cooper That's Cronk right. on the inside, it'd have been mm. under the 80s to win it for would, Melbourne, yes. but still. You talk about players putting the body on the line. You talk about uh, the what was commitment Cameron's, and effort. Cameron Smith's tackle count? It was something like 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 70 itself, yeah. sheer quality, and in the end, not just Cronulla won, Rugby League That's was the winner. It. I think it That's also it. demonstrates the strength of the NRL competition, and uh, you referred to it in terms of Cronulla, there they were on the down, down they two were, years, and then, yes, the, yes. so we got Cronulla winning for the first time in 50 years, mm. uh, the year before we had North Queensland winning their first NRL yes. title, and then before that, Sa South yeah, Sydney winning theirs yes, in many, many right. other... Uh, Many, many years since is it there, seven last different time. title winners in seven years? Have I got yeah. that right? Is that I think it is. Like I that, think yeah. it is. Nobody's now, backed up, I don't think. Have no, they? Don't yeah, think we've had four, what, four Super League winners at the grand final since 1998 yeah. and, and potentially a fifth of Warrington on Saturday. Yeah. So that only goes to show the, the strength and depth of the competition, I think, is reflected by that. Mm. And, uh, yeah. you know, good luck to Cronulla because um, you'd never have said that story two years ago. Never also, said then you'll win a grand but final. But also, as well, when you look at the, years years the, the centre for Cronulla, he played with a broken, a broken arm. Then did you see the injury? his elbow off about seven minutes and oh. they just played on I tell you what but the commitment not to shoot but even getting involved in defence yeah. you know he's sensational yeah. great advert for rugby league Jack Bird wasn't it That's yeah right. Jack Bird what, yeah, what the, an the and, Cronulla centre and you know boys not only was it class all the way on the field the, our great men are doing it off the field the interview with Cameron Smith and don't forget we're all involved in the sport it's when you're interviewed straight after a game your passions can say and do anything the beautiful way he spoke mm. and to pay respect and homage to Cronulla and how delighted he was that Cronulla had finally won 
Uh, he, look, he's a class act. I know, I know, and Dave will be in the same situation as journalists interviewing players. Yeah. He's the one of the favourite players to, to actually interview it. because yeah. he's, he's got some real gravitas and he's got some real, you know, real something purpose about, about, about he's him. He's got real he, purpose about he, him. He really has. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a tremendous player, he's a tremendous captain, he's a tremendous person as well. I can't he speak is, highly yeah. enough of no, him. Like so, um, World Club Challenge. And damn it, he's the Australian captain yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, World Club Challenge next year. Uh, I mean, is it a bit worrying that we've not got any details so far yes I think it is a bit worrying um, I did think it didn't help the fact we lost we were whitewashed again last year so that's two years on the trot it is a little bit worrying to be mm. honest because mm. we want the three games mm. uh, is it going ahead is it over there is it, is it over here is it over there I would three imagine be here there, I mean, there, was, a, there was a hint I mean um, there, was, there was a hint at the Man of Steel dinner that an exciting announcement was about to be made but right. what that involves but I, I, I hope at least that even if it's not a World Club series that we at least have Cronulla against the winners mm. of Wigan and Warrington as the World Club but, but, but again, Chris and Boys, uh, is this the way you're speaking, uh, all of us now speaking? This is again a summing up, a summation of what's wrong with the game. Yeah. Wh why is there no plan? Wh 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 but again, we why come don't we know to Sydney? Come, it, all roads lead back to Sydney. In terms of a lack of international expansion, yeah. all roads let's lead back to Sydney. Let's defend Nigel and the RFL here. I know Nigel well, you all do. Everybody can say, oh, let's blame the RFL. No, the, uh, he's a great internationalist, Nigel. He is without doubt. But as you say, if the Australian game does not want to play ball with you and tango with you and just put state of origin first and let's forget everything else, what can one do? Mm. But I'll, I tell you, think I'll tell you what we do, Lionel. Circumvent we, we, them. We, we start beating the Australians. Ah, then, well, then well that's the only start, way. And well, then we can start saying that's what well, we do. To be indeed. fair, though, to be fair, there was well, much enthusiasm from South Sydney and much enthusiasm last year, North Queensland, to go to Leeds. So, from Cronulla's perspective, to have that uh, uh, title as World Club uh, Challenge yeah, they winners, come. I would have thought they'd want to come. Exactly I, like I, Queensland did last year. They, they want to be, you know, they want to be correct. classes uh, as world champions. Of course, yeah. they do. They'll want to come. And there'd be lovely games this year. I don't know who would play who, but imagine Cronulla versus Hull and they're just great names, aren't they? We'd love to see yeah, those names. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, so that's a season very nearly done. International season to come, of course, with the Four Nations. But domestically, it's almost done and dusted. So let's just take a moment to look ahead to next season. And it's, it's great we've got you in, Lionel, because there's a lot of exciting things happening in League One next year. Toronto coming. What do well, you think about listen, that? I mean, of course, we were all asked our views of it. Um, and um, as much as I want to see the All Golds do well, the game has to come first. And so we were delighted that Toulouse are in. And you've got to remember how hard it is for part-time. We've been to Toulouse twice this year. Mm. In fact, we scored more points against Toulouse, correct me if I'm wrong, than any other club. I think we scored five tries in one game in France. Yeah. All right, we conceded a little more than that. <laughs> but um, to see Toulouse, and if they've got through the league and they've got promoted, fantastic. So now Toronto are in. So, of course, when we get the draft fixtures, Gary, the Rugby League send them to us in a few weeks' time. We can make comment where we wish to play. I can imagine that every single club has got to say, well, may we please go to Canada? Because I think the idea is they'll fly us out on the Thursday, pay for everything, hotel, a little lovely tour around the nation, and so on and so forth. And so we're looking forward to that immensely. It's going to be very difficult. Of course, they're a full-time side. We're part-time and others. But listen, if it gets them through and one day into the Super League, bravo. Oh, I thought he was going to look to the left-hand side and, and invite where with the gloss, the old gold well, suit that runs. I'll, I'll be delighted. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll be not drawn up the VIP I'll, 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 list, come, I'll, I'll, come the I'll come to the home <laughs> fixture. I'll be delighted to come to Canada with you. Well, well, he goes anywhere for free. The Australians have invited him over to Australia <laughs> in a few weeks' time. The Ara fellow said we'll pay for him to get rid of him as well. <laughs> That's a bit harsh, Mr. Woods, but anyway. Yeah, but true. Could be true. But true. Could be true. So, Toronto, have you been won over? Because you were, you were a, a, a critic, a cynic? Yeah, it, uh, but at the end of the day, though, the way that the Toronto are signing all, all the players, my yeah. main concern is simple. You know, th there's going to be too many hammered for opposition, yes. isn't it? Yes. That, that's a big worry, don't you? Yeah, you know, like they're, go they're going full time. <laughs> we all know the coaches, staff, what they've got. They're going to be very professional, both on and off the field. The quality of players is quite simple. It's going to be far too good yeah. um, for that division. They should have been promoted straight to the Championship and given opportunity yeah. there. But, but all the very yeah, best of them. Yeah. All the very best of them. But, but in terms of the business model, this is yeah. going to be a real test, yeah. isn't it? A robust test of their business model. It, it is, because it all looks great. It isn't going to be easy for them. 
Yeah. And let's be honest, they're going to just like Toulouse swept all before them. But when the money mattered at the end with Rochdale Hornets and a tough battle with Barrow, let's be honest, put yeah. a big show on last week, did Barrow. Great comeback by Barrow. Oh, I should say so. Yeah. And, um, you know, down to 11 players at one spell. They're coming up Toronto against some very mighty and famous clubs in that division. Famous it, or rugby are we, league clubs. Are we not seeing, though, in League One a kind of like a, a bit of a change away from the kind of amateur stroke semi pro? I mean, Toronto coming in on a, yes. on a big big structure, wage structure. Yes. Similarly to lose, you've got northern teams coming down and you've got Hemel Stags yeah, who have had, well. to, had to say, right, we, we can't recruit enough, we're going to move our yeah. training base to Dewsbury yeah, and yeah. we're going to get players in from the north. I was talking to Dan Sargentson about this last oh, yeah, week. Right, yeah. I mean, and he was saying, he's you know, angry, he's, he? he's, he's, he's quite angry about this, but he, You've, you've seen a fundamental change. But what is happening in the south of England it worries me because yeah. we used to have what? In London, the south, we used to have 30 development officers and according to Dan Sargent, there are now three. So and that sporting and funding has been taken away yeah. because we haven't got participation levels to the right. To, to, uh, so that's that's a worry. But yeah. but we're seeing something a little bit different in League, in League One. And is it going to be to the benefit of the sport or to the detriment? And you're there at Gloucester. Is, I mean, and, and it's very exciting with, with Toulouse and they've yeah. gone up in the Championship and Toronto. But I, I, I'm a little bit worried about the Oxfords, maybe mm. the Gloucesters, yeah, maybe true. the Hemels. Yeah. Is, that, is, that, is that fair to well, say? Well, it is fair to say. And you know, Hemel, let's be honest, they are the greatest shining light of rugby development. 35 yeah. years. And they own their own real estate, don't forget. I yeah. don't know if you've been, but they've got their own clubhouse. They've got a nice um, uh, all-weather pitch they rent out. If there was one club that should be nailing it in those terms, they're not a development club. Actually, they've going three or four decades now. Mm. Produced Kieran Dixon, Sargentson. Um, but, you know, when you're actually involved in the nitty-gritty of a club, it's tough work. We're travelling up to Newcastle and... We couldn't how many times to Cumbria maybe next year? Three times. And it's Three no times, pro yeah. yes, it's no problem when you've won. But to come back from these places having got hammered, the rugby league needs to be very careful. It doesn't crush this delicate flower that is beginning so to how flourish. Does, how does it do that? I mean, if you if, if do they create another league, or, or or should you still be right. in that league? Well, let us say what is our view in Gloucestershire, and we're not saying we're right. We're trying to produce a team that is full of boys from our part of England. Now, you can come from Mombasa, you can come from North Korea. We don't care. Live in Gloucestershire. We, you must live in our county or within 40, 45 minutes so you can come to events, uh, socials, training, all the rest of it, be involved in our life. It's going to take years for this garden to flourish. Meanwhile, David, what is making life very hard? It's not like letting Toronto in or whatever. Gary makes a point, should they go straight into the championship? I, I don't know. What concerns us, our opening game of this season, we played away Doncaster Stroke Hull. Yeah. We're losing by just a few points with a quarter of an hour to go against mighty Doncaster, laced with some real... So who do they bring on? Yeeman and Palliasina. Yeah. Yeeman is one of the great whole men of all time. Mm -hmm. He's a great Briton. He's a British lion. And he's playing against a boy who's just done his first year at the University of Gloucestershire. This is not fair. So that's now, dual reg straight. That's dual reg. If you're going to have dual reg, why don't we think it through? Why don't we say to these mighty northern clubs, you can dual reg, but you will take on geographically a part of England. So Wigan might say, right, no, Wigan, you regard Gloucestershire as your branch office. If you're going to dual reg, you give them to the all goals. Mm. Let Hull do it to Coventry and so on and so on and so on. Then you'd see a lovely balance nice. ship developing. So we have good ideas, boys. But we half cook them, we half bake them, and we don't think them through. Mm. But if they're not careful, they will lose. But that's, but that, that's down to poor administration. It's got to be Lionel. Yes. In, in terms of that, or, 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 or lack of leadership, or, or, or just recognition of, of the sport. But it would seem to me that, that there's a problem then at Red Hall, and there's a problem at Media City in terms of in terms of selling the game. Well, if you're saying there's an issue with the governance of the game, there is, because that's why the game isn't flourishing. It's wrong at the top. Not pointing at a particular individual hither and thither. I mean, I who's on the board of directors of the rugby league? I don't know. Mm. I know more about what's happening in North Korea than I know about my own sport. Maybe they're in North Korea. <laughs> well, who's in charge? <laughs> Who knows? There's a, there's a conspiracy we've not come across so far this year. Well, Lionel, if you go into North Korea with Gloucester Old Goals, I'll give that one a I'll give that one a miss. I'll give that one a miss. <laughs> what are they, Jill Regiment? Jill Regiment. I'll give that one a miss. Pyongyang. <laughs> but it's important. I mean, just we're running out of time quickly, but Gary, I mean, it is important. If we're going to have a third division that has the likes of Oxford and Hemel and Gloucester and Newcastle, there must be a 
a, a perceived pathway through for those clubs, not just the Toronto. Oh, absolutely as well, and also as well, it's got to be competitive, hasn't it? You yes, know, we're not, you, know, you know, it's got to be competitive, there, and everybody's a, a, a chance, you know, to try and get to that uh, promised land of maybe promoted. So yeah, it's got to be, it's yeah. got to be a level playing That's field. True. Okay, we've only got a couple of minutes left to go. So very quickly, each of your best memories so far, because we've still got plenty of rugby league to go. Your best memories so far. Of this season, 2016. I'm going to ask Chris. Oh, I'm going to ask. I was going to. I'll leave you to it. David, it's, quite, it's obvious. The last two minutes of what I saw at the Casey Light stream on Saturday, Salford. Wow, wow, wow. And I tell you what, you won't see that again. No, no. no. That will not be seen again on the rugby league field until next. No way, mate. <laughs> well, look, you're forcing us to do things. I think all the glamour, all the votes, has to go to the great city of Hull. Not only for this incredible game, but for the Houghton tackle. That summed up what I love so much about this wonderful sport. So the Hull at Wembley with Houghton and so on, and then what Gary said. So it's over to the whole city of Hull, really. Okay, so you've not got much to live up to there, Chris. Well, unfortunately, I was going to pick the same kind of thing. I thought, I thought the Challenge Cup final, and we've, we've had some poor Challenge Cup finals yes. in, in, in the 10 years at Wembley, but that one lived up to expectation. Yeah, indeed, yes. Great pity that weren't. I was, I was, uh, I was at Wembley on, on Sunday for the NFL, and there was. 84,000 there, and many, many more people were there. And it was a good game, but it wasn't as good as Hull v Warrington. Uh, but that tackle, but also Mark Sneed's man of the match performance there, and just the way they, yes. with, where they turned that game yes. was, was tremendous. Yes. And uh, Hull winning at Wembley, uh, uh, that to me, maybe we'll see something greater, maybe we'll see something greater on Saturday. But I thought that was a, a warming moment for, was, for Hull, yeah. Hull FC. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. Well, my, my abiding memory of this season has been, has been the warmth of sitting with you <laughs> throughout, throughout this last fortnight. I'm really disappointed you didn't mention that, but thank you anyway. So that's it. But maybe the great memories of 2016 are still to be forged. Grand final this Saturday, of course. And the four nations, much of which you can see here on Premier Sports, coming up in uh, October, November uh, and December as well. Hope you've enjoyed our chats every week. We've enjoyed sitting here and talking about the greatest game. And we hope to see you again next year on Back Chat from the Ark at Headingley. Until then, goodbye.